Well, hello, fellow leggers. It's lovely to have you with us once again. Or if you're new around here, welcome. Welcome. Come and join our Lego community. We're at the Bridge Theatre tonight yeah. to see a world premiere of a brand new play by a Olivier Award winning writer, Oscar Award winning writer, and that writer is Martin McDonough. And the play is a very, very very dark matter. So stick around to find out our thoughts. Yes, yeah, so excited for this one. We'll be telling you how many legs and whether it's break, break a leg, leg or leg it. it. Yeah, so here we are on the South Bank of London at this, um, I think is this one of London's newest theatres? It the is, theater. and it's also in a beautiful location. We're surrounded by the tall buildings, London skyscrapers, and yeah. Tower Bridge is just, just there. Just opposite, just Beautifully there. Beautifully illuminated. And plus, I don't know if you see, just about there, and like they've got lovely lighting yeah, in the a, bar foyer. It's quite a sexy foyer, isn't it's it? It's beautiful. Anyway, a yes. very, very dark matter. No, a very, 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 a very dark very, matter. A very, very, very dark matter. Don't what do we need to know? Don't forget the third dark, very, it's very important. <laughs> very important. Um, yes, world premiere, as mentioned, the story is a fictional account of Hans Christian Andersen, beloved Danish storyteller of mm -hmm. such tales as The Little Mermaid, The Ugly, Ugly Duckling. Duckling, yes, and he was believed to have a great literary mind, but we soon discover that the true source of his stories dwells in his attic and a dark secret is kept from the world. Wow, interesting. Mm. Okay, it's written by Martin McDonough. Yeah, he's a, done loads of stuff we he, love. His other plays include Lieutenant of Inishmore, which we saw. We've got a review yeah. for that. The Pillow Man, Hangmen, which we love. Fantastic. And um, his film credits include he's a writer and director for In Bruges, which yeah. you'll know, great film. And also. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Yeah, which won the Oscar most recently, which is crazy. He's doing crazing, crazily good. Crazily, crazily good. good. Ooh, crazily, crazily well. Good. Crazily well. That'll do. Uh, the cast includes Jim Broadbent as Hans Christian Andersen. Jim's other works include the role of Slater in Only Fools and Horses, uh, Moulin Rouge, and also he's been in Game of Thrones recently. But then he again, has, yes. who hasn't? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Many people have. They have. Um, is he still alive in that? He, I think, I think he is still alive. Oh, wow, yeah, I think the story's a... moved on. Oh, maybe we'll revisit him. Who Maybe knows, but he will. survived. Well done. Um, cast In the cast it also is Phil Daniels as the role of Dickens. Mm -hmm. Phil is known for his roles in Quadrophenia. That sort of made him, that did. Yeah. Um, also Scum. That's a great film. We've also seen him in This House. Yeah, the play This House. But he's maybe best known for providing the vocals on the Blur hit Park Life. Life. Yeah, he's the voice. Yeah. That's, um, is it? Is he do the talk? What is what known is, as? Yeah. What is going known as? Yeah. yeah he's that, that Cockney. 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 Um, director is Matthew Dunstat. We've enjoyed Matthew's other work. We saw Imogen at the Globe a few years ago. That was really, And also, he did Hangmen. He directed Hangmen too, and that was a fantastic So he's production. worked with uh, Mr. McDonough before. He has indeed. 90 minutes straight through, nice and zippy. So we'll be catching up with you at the end and letting you know all our thoughts. We've come to the end. Um, one act straight through. It moved pretty quick for me. Yeah, um, I definitely sort of it pushed on, and um, uh, there was really amazing scene changes. And do you know what? Again, we keep going on about it. Use of music, which really, really helps the pace. Um, what did you think overall? Okay, so um, I really, 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 as um, we say things three times yes. in relation to this piece, enjoyed it. Um, it is a really interesting piece in terms of, I, I didn't fully understand everything. I've got more questions than answers, but I was engaged throughout. Um, every single minute of 90 minutes, 95 minutes, I was engaged and interested in what was going on. I would completely agree. I would say it's a fantastic ride. The journey itself is one that is just fraught with confusion for me. I have come away with in the pieces confused or yeah, you were confused I was confused was by the piece by the storyline by the narrative by the linear non-linear timeline um, I am completely wasn't it baffled. No, I don't we don't want to give too much away. It is in it, it, is it, it is. isn't but they refer to points that aren't linear in order to make sense of the things that we are seeing and it's completely and utterly confusing. Um, 
we must mention that we're seeing this in previews and there's a possibility that this could change quite a bit before then yep. and to be honest with you I think it needs tightening up I think those bits that I'm confused about could be clarified and could be sort of reordered or lengthened or shortened in order to just make more sense of the narrative but at the moment I would say I've come out with a lot of questions, but certainly with a smile. I felt like I was smiling throughout. I have more questions actually about the characters who are real life characters. I want to go and do my research on Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah. Because from what I, what from what we can understand and pick up from the story and a bit of what we've been told by um, Joe, who works here. Thank you very much, Joe, for giving us some background information. There's some really interesting stuff going on with Hans Christian Andersen that ties into this piece. That makes me think. Do you know what? Maybe it's not just. Martin McDonough going a bit crazy with his writing, but these are actually things that happened. Well, he must and have. And there leaves more questions than answers. He must have got his inspiration from somewhere. And if any of the things in, uh, you know, that we we've seen in this piece are historically accurate, then it is a fascinating story, fascinating. which opens Intriguing. up a whole world of sort of intrigue and mystery and uh, even with Charles Dickens as well and the fact their relationship with one another they meet each other in yeah. this I would be really interested to find out how much of that is true and apparently they hated each other apparently so uh, that's just fantastic topics for writing and we get to see that as well and it's just so funny typical Martin McDonough boy yeah. is it dark it is very dark and it's dark, also dark dark humor completely and utterly absurd there are Martin McDonough pieces which remain sort of realistic. Hangmen, for example, is one of those. And there are Martin McDonough pieces such as The Pillar Man and um, like The Lieutenant of Inishmore, which are a little bit more unbelievable. And you know, they're a little bit more abstract. And I would say this is definitely falling into the abstract Martin Madonna. And as a result, I would think if you were coming to see a Martin Madonna piece for the first time, you may leave this thinking, what the F was that? I don't know. I think you would still have a really, really good time. Because it's just the the humour comes from the insensitivity of the characters towards each other and saying almost absurd things to each other but are so real that the way they talk to each other I don't know it's um I, I could see this happening you know what, being I get, true because, I of the, because of the absurdity of what is actually found in Hans Christian Andersen's attic if that's to be believed and stuff from the future and what that uh, the doors that opens up I think it's it's, it's a bit difficult because we don't want to give too much of the plot away. No, here. I mean you get so you discover a lot we're quite probably, early on. What we're but probably saying is is going to be seem a little bit odd in in itself. And if you do see the piece, you'll know a lot more what we're saying. Yeah. Um, it, so the piece is very interesting. Yeah, and I would say for me, I keep thinking about the song lyrics to the song "The Climb," whereas it's it's not about how fast we get there. It's not about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb that's important. And I feel like with this story, it is the journey that's the interesting part. Yeah, I would like we said I was interested through wow. There wasn't a moment where I was switched off and going, oh, I don't get it, or I don't know what's going on. Like I was thoroughly engaged and in, and lolling a load of. You were lolling, which is very unusual for you. I uh, let's talk about production for a little while now I've got to say I think this is some of the best lighting I've seen all year some really lovely lighting amazing yeah. lighting like stunningly dynamic breathtaking and brilliant lighting um, mm -hmm. by Philip Gladwell I was I mean he's, he did the exorcist and five guys named Mo in the West End so. oh, and five guys named Mo is some of the best lighting I've seen yeah so you know it, it was really dynamic but worked in conjunction really well with the sound uh, mm -hmm. Sound designer George Dennis Lovely and music sound. by James Maloney. James Maloney well, has nice very name. few composition credits to his name. Oh, really? Yeah, he did much ado about nothing at the Globe that we saw. That'll be why. But um, he's not got a lot. But I swear to God, this, the music in this is brilliant. I would listen to the music in this. It's a fantastic again. score, it's fantastic. fantastic soundtrack. Um, video designer Finn Ross as well. Subtle video designs and the windows as well. Lovely projection. Lovely back there, projection subtle. in there. Um, Really nice set design as set well. Set designed by Anna Fleischel. And um, did Home I'm Darling, which okay. we saw recently. I, I, and she did Hangmen. That, that was her set. And that was a fantastic loved, set as well. Loved the set. It was sort of almost it's storybook in itself, really, isn't it? Like I was thinking about fairy tales and that sort of wooden 
Swiss attic look, but then you've got the sort of Regency townhouse look as well. The dynamic, the difference mm. between the two was absolutely it was really incredible. good. Okay, any characters? Let's go on to um, Actors, performers. Yeah, I would definitely call out um, Phil Daniels. Phil Daniels is Dickens. Perfect Dickens, great comic tiny, and I felt so comfortable with his performance. Like it was just like, a, do you know what? His, his performance was like a really comfortable sweater that I was just like, oh my god, I'm so like cozy in this sort of yeah. hel hilarity. But it was just lovely. I loved it. What he did was you great. Think of him? Yeah, loved him. I've always loved him anyway. The display between him and Jim, Jim Broadbent were great. Yeah. Let's talk about Jim Broadbent. Ever Shall quickly. we? Jim Broadbent. <laughs> he plays the fool. He plays he, he a lot. Plays do you know what? I've seen him play so that. Well, before though, it's like him. he is him. Well, it's it's maybe not him, but it is what we know of he, of what he how he acts. You know, he does that there very was well. a bit of the Slughorn character from Harry Potter. There was a bit of Slater from Only Fools and Horses. Like there was nothing new, but it was brilliant, vintage Jim Broadbent. He's is just what very I would say. funny as well. And yeah. again, him with the um, other character who was the the pygmy was Johnetta Ulame Ackles. Um, who is American by the sound of things. What a find she is. Quite interesting a role. Childlike naivety to her. Yeah, now I, this was a fascinating role and I really was drawn to her. Um, I want to say that she credit, might get a her, nod, you know. professional debut. Is it? I wonder... Yeah. If, she trained okay, her, um, I wonder if she'll get a nod in, in the award season, The American possibly. Music and Dramatic Candy. AMDA, not RADA, AMDA. In, over in America. Yeah, she did. Um, I really liked her. A really interesting part. Really interesting narrative for her. I really liked her. Any other performers? It's quite a large cast. Yeah. Of kids in this as well. Yeah. No, I thought they were all solid. You know, like to see. I'd like to see Jim Broadbent. If I see him again, I'd like to see him something totally different. I, just I don't like want to him to see end him. up like no. a violence. Well, if what he does is good, violence. then I don't mind as long as what he's doing is good. There we go. But hey. <laughs> hey, it's just your opinion. But you're, we're going to let you know how many stars we're going to give this piece. So for a very, 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 very dark matter playing here at the Bridge Theatre, we are going to give... Four. Four, four stars for this piece. It's a, it is a preview, but I don't know if it's ever going to get to a five for me. It didn't see, have the elements that I've loved about other Martin McDonald's, like Hangmen for me is definitive, but and it's not that sort of a play. No, me. it's very different. Mm -hmm. It's very mysterious, very fantasy, almost very sci-fi in a way. Very, yeah, very dark. Elements, really odd. Typical McDonough, very bloody. Yeah. Um, almost you can see echoes and themes of some of his other pieces. Inish yeah. Moore struck yeah. me as well. And yeah, in its own right, completely different. And once you, if you get to see it, you'll have so many questions. You will go and do your research and it's fascinating. Yeah, it's an absolute conversation starter. Every single person around us right now is talking about what they got from this and play and yeah. that is something different for everybody and which we is really touch fascinating on, um, very 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 quickly you've yeah, got to say quick, along the lines of you know it really does touch along the lines of race and mm. just how people in those times were so blasé and they about treat race one and how they treated each other and mm. also how we see historical figures nowadays but actually their past are very dark and yeah. should we still have those statues all these questions so many questions so many questions but hey that's just what we thought did you have any questions following seeing the piece pop down to the comments below and let us know if you like us, give us a subscribe. We'd love for you to hang around and see more of us. We're the Breaker Leggers, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye.